and I got a big puff of white smoke. We might have found our problem. We're back in the cat. So there's where the pony motor would be. There's the head for the diesel and the diesel engine block. That's the governor for the diesel. And right here is where the starting clutch, starting pinion goes in that hole. So one of the really cool things about this machine is right there. You see that? There's three nuts and a plate over a hole. And so we're going to remove that. And that is where the new starter is going to be added to be able to direct start the diesel engine with its own starter. So it fits right in that area. So the other reason I took out the pony motor starting pinion, clutch, and the governor is to be able to put the starter in from the top. Otherwise, you have to remove that hydraulic pipe below, and I've already spent a bunch of money on hydraulic fluid and I really didn't want to waste it. So it was just easier to have gone, gotten those out and then kind of go through them and show you a little bit about them. But right now we're going to get those those nuts off, take that plate off, and see what we've got. There's the cover, and there we have our hole, right into the side of the flywheel case. Beautiful. Oh yeah! It has arrived. I'm gonna knock our lifter down. mother. Look at all that packing. You know what that is? It's a beast is what it is. Packed a piece of wood in there to keep it from poking through. What a well, well packaged package. It's a hell of a package. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you a new old stock Delco Remy 24 volt 42 MT starter. Clockwise rotation. This is going to be an additional way to start the diesel engine. Hell yes. So it's got some surface rust here on the mounting flange, but this is a brand new starter. And I am absolutely excited about it. Now, to get it to work on our machine out there, we're going to have to do some work here to the drive. Um, this particular one will not engage with our flywheel, so that is something we're going to have to do a little work to make it right. We're not getting rid of the pony motor. We are not getting rid of the pony motor. We're keeping it. It'll now give me two ways to start this machine. So 
obviously for a lot of reasons the pony motor is awesome and it's cool but it also has its downsides it takes longer to start it doesn't always you know there's more things to go wrong um and so i am really really excited to be able to add this in addition to i figured honestly having had to take off so many pieces due to the issues i was having with the pony motor might as well just go ahead and add it now one cool thing is that for me to add this all i have to do right below the pony motors clutch there's a plate that's bolted to the flywheel housing and the beauty for me is i just unbolt that it has three bolts and this has three bolts one two and three and so all i have to do is bolt that baby up make sure that this guard doesn't hit the flywheel we got to do a little work to this cone to make it fit properly and a little work to this gear but a lot of the older ones older than 1956 you had to drill a hole into the block and then tap three holes and it was not an easy thing to do you had to do a lot of work to get rid of the uh, pony motor and that's the main reason people do it. They, it. Not a lot of people are probably doing what I've done, which is having the desire to be able to start the diesel with both. Most people abandon the pony motor completely. They either take it out, put the batteries in there where the pony motor was, or they take it out completely and just get rid of it. I'm opting to keep both, but I'm doing that mainly because I have to do almost no work. It is extremely easy for me to bolt this up to pre-drilled holes, put this into a pre-drilled slot right where, you know, this, this flange here will fit right inside. And so if it had been a situation where I would have to drill the hole for this properly in line and drill all three holes for the, for the mounting holes, I wouldn't be doing it. Not at all. I don't have the time. I don't want to mess, but... I got lucky and I basically have a plug and play set up on my machine and so that's why we're adding this bad boy and I am really excited about having the option and we'll do the wiring not sure quite how I'm gonna wire it this is a 24 volt starter the starter on the pony motor is 6 volts and to be honest I've been starting it on 12 volts with a jumper pack and so what I may do is I may put a 12 volt battery under the uh, seat in the battery box and then another 12 volt right next to it and I'm not sure if I want to do like two batteries connected and then a little cutoff switch between them and then when I want to run the starter for the pony motor I disconnect so I'm only running off one and giving it 12 volts and then when I want to start the the big starter flip the switch and engage it to 24 volts so I can get 24 volts to this starter so my plan is to try and figure that out. If you know a way to actually physically wire a system so that it has a 12 volt leg to one thing and 24 volt leg to another thing without having to have a cutoff switch under there or, or whatever, let me know. I'd love to know how you guys would do that. Um, I've got a few ideas and you know I'm gonna have to figure something out. Worst case scenario for right now, I'll just run a power wire to the butt, the seat below, and then when I want to hook up and start the starter with this one, I'll just hook up my 24 volt jumper pack. And if I want to hook up the starter for the pony motor, I'll hook up the 12 volt jumper pack to to the starter for the pony motor. Um, speaking of that, why don't we grab the jumper pack and uh, give this a quick test and make sure it is new old stock. All right, so. Got the starter hooked to jump and carry, 24 volts, positive here, negative here. We've got the solenoid here is jumpered. I don't think this switch here is, relate, is rated for 24 volts, which I think it's gonna smoke on us, but we're just gonna bump it, just make sure this thing fires. Sweet. Which is smoking. Wires are getting hot. You hear that? Whew. 
smoking. Probably not good for it. But, good thing we know we've got, ugh, come on, come on. We know we've got started the turns on, so I am happy about that. Check out that beautiful badge. Delco Remy 42MT. We want a clockwise rotation, 24 volts. So if you're looking to convert a system to a direct start for an old cat like this, you want a 40 or a 42MT. And so the 40MTs are, are a little bit older, I think, um, from what I've been reading. And a 40 or a 42MT will work for a D2 all the way through a D9. And so um, that is the absolute easiest way I can explain to you what you need. Now, we'll talk more about what you need to do to this starter to make it fit your machine once we get to that point, because there is a little bit you have to do. But I just wanted to show you that badge. I mean, beautiful, beautiful badge. I mean, this thing has been sitting on a shelf somewhere. And... I am ecstatic to have this old piece and can't wait to get it on the machine. A little rust was holding that. But these are all threaded holes, and so this cone can go on a whole different bunch of different angles and different machines. So that's why I made sure to mark the line here and the line here. And there's no guarantee that that's going to be the right spot for this setup that I need on the cat, but I wanted to at least have some sort of an idea of what it came off of when I got it new. So that gives me a starting point. So I need to make some cable lugs for the heavy duty cable. And I've got this piece of copper tube and I'm gonna make them out of that. So yes, it's used, but it'll be fine. I'm gonna clean it up on the wire wheel here and then we'll uh, we'll make them. I'll show you how. All right, so you take your new or used copper tubing, preferably new, but this is what I have. And if you buy it new, it's probably already straight or it might be in a coil. Doesn't really matter. We're gonna cut off the ends here. Save those for something. something else. And then basically you figure out how long you want your lug to be. I don't know, how much do we have here? Six, about nine inches. Two inches is probably good. All right, we got that marked, and we're going to cut those out. All right, so now you got your lugs or chunks of tube. You take it, just a chunk of a round stock that I use as a little baby anvil, and you take and you just smash. Next, I take them over the 2x72 
and I just clean them up a bit. Next, I take a little deburring tool, take it in the inside, and just clean up the inside edge, just like that. So that's where we're at right now. Your wire goes in the hole, and is either crimped, soldered, crimped and soldered, whatever, and We'll drill a hole right here where the bolt will go through or the terminal for the battery will go through and then you can uh, put a nut onto it. Doesn't take long to make these, it's quick. And they're a heck of a lot cheaper this way. Next up we're going to drill the hole in it. Put it on a block of wood here. Get a center punch. Make a mark. Copper is very soft but it still helps to have a mark for your drill bit to follow. Well, that drill bit's dull. There we have the lug, good enough for the projects I do. And we'll clean up the inside with a wire brush before we go using it. And yeah, a few more of them. Heck of a lot cheaper than buying them. Faster too. All right. Next up, I need to change out the Bendix drive on this starter here. This is a Delco Remy 42MT 24 volt clockwise rotation starter that I bought off eBay and I probably got a great deal on it because it has in service for us but this is an American made awesome awesome brand new starter never been used and I can tell that even looking at this this Bendix gear is brand new everything is brand new I and mean, we've just been sat on a shelf for a while so I contacted George at autolec.com and he is a guy that specializes in cat retrofits for caterpillar, old caterpillar tractors like Old Red and basically helps you figure out what you need to convert to a direct starter. And so he basically told me everything I needed to do, everything that, you know, it would take and hooked me up with the proper Bendix drive. So a huge thank you to him. I'll put a link to his website in the description of this, but the flywheel on the cat has this angled drive gear. And so you have to replace the Bendix that's in this machine or in this, uh, the starter here with this one. So we're going to take this apart. These are E8. Uh, bolts, which is basically, it's the reverse of a torque bit. Essentially, it looks like this. And so, it's a star bit, and honestly, until this project, I'd never come, and come into one. So, I went to Harbor Freight and did the right thing and bought the crappiest set of them I could find so that I can get these off, because honestly, I mean, they're going to go in my toolbox. Who knows if I'll ever need them again, but... Um, so we've got to take off this front cone, pull this forward, and that should allow us to put this Bendix drive in and take the other one out. From the looks at it though, I do have to take off uh, this mounting bolt there. So yeah, George, I called him and he basically gave me exactly what I needed to know in regards to what starter to buy, what Bendix gear I need, What's the voltage that I need to be running He also at. does sell the kits himself, so he could build you one of these for you. 
Um, I opted to do it myself mainly because I wanted to show you guys how little it goes into doing this. Um, but it's one of those deals that if you're mechanical at all and you needed to do this, you could figure it out. And here's the reason I needed to go buy that socket. I already tried to get this one off, and I marred, and I marred it all up. There we go. Next up, we got a break right here, this collar, separate, all the while keeping the commutator that way. So we don't want to pull it out of the brushes on this end and have to end up taking the cap off and redoing it, so. Doesn't seem too bad, but. Alright, I gotta reach in here and keep this from pulling out with the nose cone. There's our old Bendix, and as you can see, they're the same length, but different size teeth, different size, different angled tooth, and this should fit right in. Let's make sure this uh, fits on the shaft here. Perfect. Yep. So those splines fit into these splines perfectly all right the way this works is these two basically round pieces ride inside of this collar there and so and this is spring loaded and that's why when the starter engages this thing kicks out because the electrical power is pushing the bending gear out to uh out to engage the flywheel and then the spring pulls it back in once power is disengaged and that's what that mechanism does so what I'm gonna do is pull that back and what I gotta kinda do is kinda like sneak that in there just like like that alright so I got that pried up I'm gonna kinda slip this down in there like that. Pull that out. Perfect. That should be good. And now we just put it back together. So this shaft will go all the way in, and then these splines will engage on that Bendix. gonna get these bolts started so that I can make sure this thing gets lined up properly and I'll use the, the bolts to bring the whole case back together there's a rubber seal right in here right around there an o-ring that keeps it weather tight see that gap right there I'm gonna bring that together Last but not least, put this bolt here that holds this tube 
the body of the case. And then this wire here, I took it off, goes right on this lead. And that lug there, put this nut back on. So, yeah, George definitely, I mean, he told me exactly how to replace this. Not that it was crazy hard. I'd just never done it, so I had some questions. And, I mean, that took no time at all. And so now this starter is set up for the flywheel on the diesel. So you may be wondering why I want a direct start for the diesel. And so... With this machine, obviously the nostalgic way of starting it with the pony motor is awesome. You know, it gives it that old feel, the old look. I am not getting rid of that. The pony motor is getting rebuilt and getting put back on there. The reason I want this, having the ability to direct start on this machine is going to be great. When I'm out in the woods and I'm using it, say I want to shut it down for some reason. I want to go cut a tree with a chainsaw or something. I don't want to leave this running. I can stop the machine, turn it off. And then go do whatever I got to do if I got to talk to somebody. But then I can walk right back up to a warm machine, click a button, and boom, I'm started. I'm The diesel's running. I'm back to working. No messing with the pony motor. No dealing with, did I run out of gasoline? Is it having issues? Is the carburetor clean? Blah, 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 blah. So that is the main reason I wanted to be able to direct start it. It's way faster. Now, the pony motor start... I want to keep that for multiple reasons. Number one, I want to keep it because that's the way it was designed. It was built this way. It was, it's always been started with the pony motor. So I love that. I love the way in which it started. It's unique. There are not a lot of machines that have another engine that starts them. And so if I want to take this machine and bring it to some show and, and you guys could come visit, this allows me to show you how the pony motor actually starts it. The other thing is in the cold weather, the pony motor heats the coolant. They share coolant between the diesel and the pony motor, and it literally warms the engine block of the diesel, and you can run it for 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and basically get that diesel block nice and warm before you ever even consider putting fuel to it, and that's way better on the diesel engine in the winter. And so... You know, am I going to run it in the winter? Probably not a lot. I mean, I don't know. We'll see what where this machine goes and what we end up doing with it. But at the end of the day, the bigger reason that I want to leave it is to keep the nostalgic, classic way of starting it, but add this to give me the other option in a real-world situation when I'm going to be using this machine. I plan to use this machine. It's not just going to be a machine that gets put into a barn and never touched. I want to be able to start it quickly. I want to be able to get right to it. I've owned a lot of machinery in my, my day and never had anything like a pony motor. And so I feel awesome, absolutely blessed that this thing was already set up and the machine was already set up to take these three. Because this, see, this is the three bolt hole flange that fits onto the pony motor. This will literally go right into the housing and then the three bolts that are in there will bolt the entire, the entire starter onto the cat, just like that. And so these three bolt holes will bolt onto the cat, and we'll have to situate this at the right angle. Got to figure that out once once we get it in there. And then literally, all I got to do is wire it up, put power to it when I need to start it, and boom, we got it. So um, we made these lugs to be able to make the wires to connect this back to the battery bay. And then I've got a push button start that we're gonna add. Not sure quite how I'm gonna figure that out or how I'm gonna do that yet, but uh, we'll figure that out together once we get into there. So, guess I got an extra Bendix for, maybe I'll have a truck one day that needs this, but I don't know, I'll hang on to it all. Store it away. And, but this, other than this nose cone, is, is ready to rock and roll, ready to throw in the cat. Again, big thank you to George. Autolec.com. Link in the description. A lot of you might think, oh, well, when the heck are you really going to ever need that? Or will you ever need that? Or how are you ever going to find it? Well, a couple things. First off, 
I have no idea if I'll ever need this. No idea. So, I might as well hang on to it. But the problem is, and the problem with people like me who hang on to stuff like this, is number one, you can't find it. And then number two, when you do find it, you don't know what it is exactly. And so, to try and avoid that, I do a lot of organization in my shop to try and get things in places where they're around other things so that in the time when I'm going to look for something, I can find it. So for instance, this. I don't have any additional Bendix drives laying around, I don't. But I do have other starter parts and similar things. So what I do, this is the wrapping that the new one came in. So I'm gonna put this in here, wrap it up. But what I also do is I write this out. So this is just a note card. It's the Bendix drive off a of Delco Remy Series 42MT Type 400. I wrote every single bit of information on the tag onto this note card. Counterwise, or clockwise rotation, 24 volts, model, serial, etc. And I'm going to stick this in there with it. And, you know, I have gone through enough sheds where I've gotten things from people who have either passed away or, you know, retired or whatever. And I find parts all the time that I have no idea what they are. No clue. I mean, I know what the part is, but I don't know what they go to. I don't know what they fit. I don't know anything about it. And so, you know, a 42 MT is a very, very common big truck starter. And so there is a very good chance that I may need this at some point. So, by wrapping it up like this, I know it's going to stay safe, I know it's not going to get eaten up by the weather, and then when I need it, I know exactly what this comes off of, and I can marry it up with whatever starter I may or may not have, or may need a part for, or whatever, and not have uh, lost it. And so, just a tip, for me personally, the reason I do this is because I know myself. I know after this minute that we're talking right now, and I'm showing you this, I will not remember any of that information. No way. I don't need to. It's kind of irrelevant. At the end of the day, I don't need to remember any of that information because I've set myself up in a situation where all the information is there and I know enough to be able to look where I, I put certain things to find it in the instance in the future when I may need it. And so I don't concern myself with memorizing everything or remembering exactly where you know, what did that fit or what did that come off of? Well, I don't need to know that anymore. It's all here. And that frees up mental capacity in my brain to handle other things and be able to do more with my brain than remember all the little itty bitty details. You know, I struggle with details and I know that about myself. And so I try and find ways to keep those details at hand, but not necessarily have them memorized. You know, all, as I was growing up in school, when I, I, I sucked at tests, especially ones where you had to memorize everything. I remember when, you know, teachers would make you memorize all these math charts and these equations and blah, 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 and they'd tell you, oh, you'll never have a calculator in your pocket everywhere you go. Well, boy, do we prove them wrong. I have a calculator everywhere I go. I've got the, the interweb right at my fingertips. I can look stuff up, you know, and... I don't need to memorize everything. Even in my own shop, in the organizational side, I don't need to know every bit about it because I'm setting myself up for success with it later. So, hope that helps. It's just me personally how I handle it and not everybody's the same. And so, you know, find your own way. Find your way of being able to handle things, be able to deal with it. Some people can work in a totally messy shop with stuff everywhere and never have a problem with it. I can't. And I've got to be able to have or things organized. Otherwise, not a whole lot can get done. Um, but that's how I'm going to store this baby. And if and when I need it, there it is. All right, so this is the nose cone of the starter. And we're going to test fit it in there because sometimes you have to grind part of the housing here out of the way so that it doesn't contact the flywheel inside the case there. So I'm going to slip it in there and see how much we got to take off. Well, 
looking from over here, I definitely have a lot more room on the lower side, so I gotta take some off the top of that side of the cone. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna grind out this area that I've colored with the Sharpie. Basically right there, because it's contacting right in this area. You can see where the Sharpie's kind of come off. And so, I think it'll be plenty strong still. So maybe I'll start out just cutting this piece out and then try it again. Let's try that. All right, test fit it, and it's almost good. I don't need to take that off, but I do need to come towards the nose cone, so I think I'm gonna come straight here, and then come straight down there. You know, for shits and giggles. Just go across and down. Try that. Now you can see there's clearance. Flywheel's right there. You can see those teeth from it. And as you can see, we ground across the top and down. So yeah, basically we made a slot in there so that the flywheel doesn't come in contact with that nose cone. Just because the way it's angled, it, uh, it wouldn't have fit perfectly in the opening that was on there. So... Ground a little off. Now it shouldn't make any contact with the flywheel. And now we can get the starter kind of situated and in there and figure out a good spot for it. Because the starter is basically going to go in this little area right here. Well, I got this in there situated and I made some marks as to where you can mount this. So basically the, the cone here has six holes that have six recessed bolts that can fit into any number of these tapped and drilled holes. And so in order to get this to fit in there, from doing a little looking at it, I'm going to have to basically situate it something like this. The solenoid itself is not going to fit up at all. So I believe that it's going to look, let's see here, something like, something like that. So I'm going to get this flange bolted onto the starter, and then we're going to drop it down in there and see if it fits. So a lot of times I like to make gaskets with a ball-peen hammer, but when you have like raised flanges and it's hard to get the center it can be more difficult and so it's one of those deals where right now I'm just gonna do it with scissors get the outside figured out and then really need to get the inside but well, maybe I can get it let's see
Was there a gasket? Thing ain't light. This thing is not light. Come on, baby. bolted up and next up we'll have to get it wired but it's ready to rock and roll baby and get the starting clutch in put the governor back in and then it'll be on to reinstalling the pony motor yeah I am really excited about having the option to be able to direct start this bad boy I would really like to try it right now, but obviously I can't because the pony motor shares coolant with the diesel right there in that hole. And so if I was to start the diesel, I would just make a huge mess. So it's in there. Now, the next thing I need to do on the starter is I need to wire it and run it up to the um, the panel, the control panel, the operator area that currently is not in the tractor. So that's gotta wait too. So yeah, once we get the pony motor back in the machine, we'll get the wires run up to another start button that's gonna be on the dash panel up near the operator. Uh, for now, the big push was to get that in there so that now I can put the starting clutch back in put the governor back on and be that much ready more ready to put the pony motor back in so awesome really excited about having this feature but as much as I'd love to try it yep not happening today so look forward to that and when once we get it all put back together i'll show you guys basically the different ways to start it we'll start it with the pony motor and then we'll start it with the, the direct start and they'll both have their uses so yeah it's gonna be awesome here's a shot from the belly of the machine as you can see there's the the bottom of the starter and i had to reposition the starter solenoid at an angle to be able to get that mounting bolt installed it was the way i had it it was basically right behind here and you couldn't even get the nut in there and so i was able to twist it but with that change that changed the fact that right here there was a mounting hole you can still see the half circle i had to cut that off and grind it back so that it wouldn't come in contact there or here but all that mounting hole was for, it, it originally had a, a strap from this hydraulic hose up to that. It wasn't connected, so I was like, whatever. I believe, a friend of mine actually told me he thought 
that hole there and that hole there were probably the original holes that they used when they made the, mach the motor on the line at Caterpillar. And so what they do is they machine off a flat, bolt it to something on the, on the line when they're producing the motors, and then it rolls down the assembly line that way. And so I'm fine having cut that. I don't feel like it affects anything, especially because of the additional um, awesomeness that we're adding. So right back here is where we're gonna have to run the wires from. So we'll run them from up here, one to the battery box, and then another one up to the um, to the dash panel in the operator's compartment area. So, so yeah, I am excited to have this. This is going to be so nice being able to use it, and having not lost the pony motor. So it was a little bit of a bear to get in there, but it at the end of the day wasn't that bad especially because i already had the hole and the three drilled and tapped bolt holes be able to mount it in there so i feel lucky to have had that and can't wait to put it to use all right here's a shot from above so here's the operator the operator sits right here there's a dash panel right here with all the controls pony motor sits there Starting clutch goes right in this hole. Right below it is the newly installed starter. And then right here is where the governor goes. And then that's the diesel engine block. So the block is here. This is the head. This is the valve cover. And the rockers and valves basically are uh, accessed through that. And from this side, you can see Starter nicely fits right down there in the midst of all that and yet out of the way, which is awesome. Now here's a quick question for you. I am debating very heavily on doing the head gasket on this diesel because I know for a fact that it leaks. And I don't know if it leaks enough that it should matter, but it's one of those deals it was leaking along the back here if we go to the other side it was leaking right along there and you can see it was leaking right there and I haven't run this machine for very long and honestly it's been sitting for so long that I'm debating on whether or not it is gonna be worth doing right now is probably one of the easiest possible times to do it because of everything else I already have disassembled. The entire pony motor is out, the entire dash panel's out, the intake, the entire air intake for the diesel is out. All I literally have to do, remove valve cover, take the rocker arms off, unbolt everything, pull this decompression lever out, and lift the head up and out. Now granted, that's a heck of a lot sim more simplified than what actually has to happen, but in looking at everything, it's almost like now would be the time to do it. And so what's your thought? What's your opinion? Should I do it? One thing I don't really want to come into is I don't want to take the head off and end up having a whole ton more problems or open up a can of worms. And that's really my worry because this motor did run and actually ran quite strong. But the flip side to it is, is I'm this far in, and as I've said that before, goodness, I'm gonna say this in every video, I'm here. I don't wanna do piston rings, I don't wanna do sleeves, I don't wanna have to do any of that. But assuming those are all good, I shouldn't have to. I shouldn't have to do anything but pull the head off, clean it, put the new head gasket in. There's some other miscellaneous parts that have to get replaced. Um, and then put everything back together and move on. I don't know. What's your thought? Should I do it? Should I not? Let me know in the comments. I am seriously considering it. 
the end of the day, all I really want to do is start this dang thing up and start putting it to work. But I've been having so much fun working on it and wrenching on it and learning. And you guys seem to be enjoying the videos. So let me know if you think I should. Let me know from more than just the content side of it. If you think I should purely due to where I'm at in the build, where I'm at in the restoration, or if you've done this, I'd love to know your thoughts. Is it as simple as it looks? Is there any big red flags? I know the only big red flag you have to make sure to do is pull this decompression um, lever basically out of it so you can get, um, I think the rockers off, something like that. I'd have to look again, but let me know your thoughts down in the comments. As of now, awesome new addition with the starter and man, I am excited. Old red, still looks rough. But mechanically, we're getting him there. That's really all I care about. A little bit at a time. <laughs> right, guys? Hi, guys. Hi, Scout. Oh, hi. Hi, Ruby. Hi, Ruby. Oh, hi. Hi, hi. Hi, Bowden. Oh, hi, guys. Here's another question. This is an 04 Chevy Tahoe that I have to do a head gasket on and new bumper, some front end stuff brake lines if I did a series fixing this thing up would you watch it I'm debating on whether or not to video it or just do it because it has to get done I just don't know if the content would do well let me know your thoughts and definitely let me know your thoughts on old red here I truly appreciate you coming and stopping here at salvage workshop so much more to come from salvage workshop and all my crazy dogs Hi, Scout. All right, so got all six of the dogs out here for a walk. And check this out. So, I don't do small bonfires. And tonight, we're going to be lighting this big boy off. That ain't no small log either. Check that out. This thing is huge. You guys ever been to a bonfire this big? I'm sure some of you have. Others maybe never. And we're gonna light this baby off in a crazy awesome way. You guys wanna come with? Do you guys wanna watch how we uh, light this monster off? Let me know in the comments if you do. It should be a lot of fun, I'm excited. <laughs> 